Each week, we invite a campus or community leader to talk about how today's student can develop their leadership skills, as well as other advice regarding personal and professional development. Unfortunately, today, the screen that is with us is not working. Um, Anna, our speaker, does have slides that she will help you use your imagination as if you can see them. And if you want to rewatch the presentation um, later on on the recording, you'll be able to see the slides. But today's speaker is our general manager of the Alaris Center, Anna Rosberg. Join me in welcoming her. Thanks, Peter. It's a big step. I'm going to try to tell you that this front slide is a picture of the Alaris Center. So hopefully you can visualize what that looks like. Um, I'm Anna Rosberg. I'm the GM at the Alaris Center. Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit about the relationship that the city of Grand Forks has with the Alaris Center and kind of explain what my role is uh, to get us started. So um, the Alaris Center was built in 2001. We do about 300 to 450 events a year. It is owned by the city of Grand Forks. So in um, the relationship that I have with the city is wonderful. They're actually my client. I have a board that I report up to as well. Um, which is called our Event Center Commission. So they don't look at day-to-day -day operations too much. It's more of a high-level capital uh, funding sort, sort of board. Um, but the, the company I work for is called Oakview Group. Um, we manage hundreds of buildings all over the world. I think in the last five years, there's only been a handful of buildings that have actually been built um, worldwide, and Oakview Group actually owns all of them and has put in the investment to build those themselves. So a little bit different than the situation here in Grand Forks where we manage all of the operation on behalf of the city. So they are our client. Um, the mission of the Alaris Center is to provide premier entertainment that stimulates the economy and um, enhances quality of life for all of you, area residents and students and community uh, wide in the surrounding area. So our job really is to be an economic engine for the hotels and the restaurants, anybody that might come for a football game or a concert and really just welcome them to the community. Um, a little bit about me. I am doing the tour of cold states. So I grew up in Minnesota, Elk River, Minnesota. Um, I was really involved in an organization called DECA, an association of marketing students. Um, I played volleyball through high school and a year in college. Please don't come to Choice Health and Fitness on Thursday nights. I am not good anymore, but I do try in my old lady league still. Um, but Minnesota, you know, grew up there. My family is there. I had the opportunity to go out to college in Colorado um, where I really fell in love with events. Um, I worked as a marketing and ticketing intern for um, the Denver Outlaws. It's a professional lacrosse team that plays at or did play at Empower Field at Mile High. So um, I started on the team side in marketing and ticketing, uh, really was able to kind of understand stadium operations a little bit and game day promotions and all of those things that, you know, the fabulous UND athletics team does. Think of an intern. That was me unpaid back in those days, intern Anna. Um, it was really great experience. And so when I graduated, I went up to Wyoming, again, another cold state, windier than here, if you can believe it. Um, and I was the director of marketing for the Casper Event Center at that time. It's about a 10,000 seat arena. Um, we do, you know, we did football concerts, uh, arena football concerts, weddings, banquets, very similar business model when you think of the Alaire Center, just a little bit more of a miniature version. Um, and so I was there, but I also oversaw the um, the ski area, the golf course, the rec ice aquatic center and a museum under my purview for marketing and PR. So really my background through and through is marketing. Um, I'm a big believer of everybody in the organization sells. Um, I think that's a core principle for me. Um, but really what, what bit me was the live event energy. And so I think, um, more than just being an economic engine for a community like Grand Forks, um, we're really in the business of making memories and those can be really positive or really negative. And I think every time we have an opportunity to touch um, a, a customer, a client, a fan, whatever that looks like, um, that's really important. In our business, we talk about it a lot on our staff, all the way, you know, 300 employees, um, part-time ushers and security. We talk about that a lot is that, you know, we're, this is our home and we're welcoming people into our home and we're going to be the ones that they have that experience with. Um, and let's make sure that we're creating memories for them, whether that's a bride or a football fan, right? Um, I think the small town aspect of Casper really helped me. Um, it helped me dabble in a lot of different areas of, of event operation. So um, again, you know, instead of being really focused on marketing and ticketing as an intern, um, there's a thousand people. Oh, I'm like losing my mic. Um, there's a, like a thousand people in every department. So you really kind of have to stay in your lane in a big city. 
I had the ability to really like learn operations and food service and sponsorship and all the things that I probably had no business doing at 22, 23 years old. Um, I remember a time I was sitting in the city manager's office there in Casper and I was explaining to them why we needed $300,000 for a capital project. 23. I don't know how I was able to be in that room, but I think I've had some really good opportunities um, to be in rooms that I wouldn't have had that opportunity to be in had I been in a really big market. So um, when you're looking, if you're a student and you're looking for you know, what you're going to do next, to me, I really think um, the small building and the small town atmosphere gives you the most experience in so many different areas, um, which really just builds your resume. So the last tour as of now on my uh, cold states is North Dakota. Um, I got here in 2017 as the general manager. I have no plans to leave. Um, there was a really attractive job that we talked about recently within my company, and I turned it down because I think Grand Forks is an amazing place. Um, and it is not lost on me that my client, the city of Grand Forks, is wonderful to work with, and not all of them are. So I don't take that for granted. Um, Anyway, so in 2017, I came to the Allaire Center as the general manager, and then just recently I've been promoted to uh, district general manager. So my, I'll still keep my job here in Grand Forks, um, but the gen venue GMs in Sioux City, Iowa, Brookings, South Dakota, and Ralston, Nebraska will now report up to me in our corporate structure. So um, I'm excited about that, but I've had a lot of time on I-29 the last couple of weeks, um, and I'm ready to stay put. So this slide that you can't see is um, about OVG 360, just to kind of give you an idea of who the company is. Uh, and the purpose and their mission is to be a positive disruption to business as usual in sports, live entertainment, and hospitality industries. Um, so for example, you know we've got venues all over the world. They're working on with the Crown Prince in Saudi Arabia to build uh, an arena there. We have a Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle that was a historic project. They raised the roof, I think it was for two years, and then build, built a net zero uh, emissions um, carbon footprint venue, which is incredible. Um, in Coachella Valley, they just built Akershire Arena there. Um, and so there's a partnership with uh, Harry Styles for a project right now that's going on in Manchester, UK. Um, so the, the owners of, of the company I work for have some pretty great relationships. Um, the other one I'll point out is Austin, Texas. Um, Moody Center is a partnership with Matthew McConaughey. So I'm like, anytime you guys want me to come help out, well, let me know. I'm there. Um, so then the next slide is just kind of a map of the U.S. Uh, and Canada. Lots of Canadian buildings and lots of uh, venues in the U.S., which is great because it gives our opportunities. This keeps clicking without me. Go back. Um, it gives us lots of opportunities to grow our, our employees. So if you start at an Alara Center or a Ralston Arena or anywhere else in our company, there's the doors are so open for you to move into different you know, operations or event management or any of those different kind of fields um, within the company all over the world. Um, so I think that that's really been instrumental in my growth and it's what brought me to Grand Forks, which is closer to home for me. So kind of came full circle. Um, some of the things that I think make a good leader in this industry, but also that translate to a lot of other industries um, is the ultimate team sport. So I always say this to our staff, it's the ultimate team sport to be able to open the doors. I can't open doors at the Allaire Center without hundreds of other people that are willing to make it happen. We need the people that are making the hot dogs. We need the people that are cleaning the bathrooms. Um, and we need the people that are willing to scan tickets and do security. Um, I, I can stand up here all day, but an event doesn't go on without all of, those, all of those individuals. And so I think making sure that the frontline employees that are actually doing the work, make sure they feel valued. I think that's kind of my, that's been a key um, to my career is just making sure that you have relationships with all of those people and that they know how instrumental they are to uh, the end of the day success. The other thing um, that I talk about a lot is embracing the grind. So nights, holidays, family events, um, outworking the competition. I think that's really important. Um, that's been important for me is I might not have been the smartest person in the room when I was 23, but I was going to outwork them. And I think that was what definitely uh, gained me some respect and allowed me to grow a little bit quicker than I might otherwise have. Um, so I think that's, that's been instrumental. Um, and the nights, holidays and family events, I joke about this, but almost always your feast of nations is either on my birthday or we have Harlem Globetrotters on my birthday. Um, and so I've gotten really good at saying, you know, I don't, a day is a day. We'll celebrate another time, but we've got work to do. We've got an event and, um, that bride or that fan or those event planners, that's their Super Bowl all year. So we have to kind of put our own stuff aside and make sure that that event, you get one chance to make that event happen. Um, and so I think it's the adrenaline rush for me that kind of 
is something that fills my bucket. Um, the other thing is to keep the mentality of why we do what we do. Make sure that, you know, our, our team and all of us, if we're having a down day, again, these people plan all year for this one event. We're doing 400 of them. We don't get to come in and just be flippant about, oh, it's just XYZ event, train show. Well, no, like this is something these people have worked on for a really long time. And so it's important to understand that big picture, even when we're tired. Um, think yes and be solution driven. The show has to go on, baby. We say that all the time. It might get weird sometimes. There might be like, we go through plan A, B, and C, and we've got to be on plan D, but it's got to go on. And I think um, that mentality really applies to all business. Um, you've got, you know, maybe a deadline or whatever that looks like. Maybe you're a doctor, like you got to figure it out, right? So um, I've never had a conversation with anybody that reports to me, any of my teammates or anybody that I report to where I've been able to have a successful conversation where I'm like the no police, right? Um, I think try not to be the no police and instead look for creative solutions on how do we get to yes? How can we find a way, um, even if it's not plan A? Um, the other thing that we talk a lot about at the Allaire Center and in some of our other buildings, and it, I, I think this one applies to every industry as well, um, professional, respectful, and kind. There are a lot of times when we're not going to get along with our coworkers. You might not like them. You don't need to go out for a glass of wine with them after work. You don't need to hang out with them on the weekends. But you do have to be respectful, professional, and kind. And I think those things are our ground rules at the Allaire Center. Um, if people are working 80 hours and they're tired and they're cra crabby and they think, you know, so-and-so failed me on this and I had to pick up the slack, um, we can talk about those things and we can have open dialogue and people can come into my office and say, I really don't agree with this and here's my idea. And I'm always open to that, but it's, it has to be professional, respectful, and kind. Um, and so if it hits those three things, then we can have any open conversation that we need to have. Um, but that's been really important. I think, you know, everybody, there's always sometimes office friction, but that's really helped us build a culture where people want to stay. Um, an example of that is we've got Jonas Brothers coming um, in a few weeks. So if you haven't bought your tickets, this is my shameless plug. I, get, I said everybody sells. Um, so Ticketmaster.com. Uh, the very next day, we have a football game, UND football game. And so most of us will work 40 or 50 hours straight. We're not going home. I'll probably shower in the locker room, put on another dress, and we're going to rock and roll because, again, the show goes on. Um, and I think when you're run down like that, you have the ability to get a little edgy. And so, again, those ground rules kind of like keep us between, between the lines for us. Um, some of the other kind of traits that I was thinking about when I went through this things that have been successful for me anyway, um, have been to always be authentic. I can be a little bit of a goofball sometimes, uh, but I think it's important that our staff sees that and that they know that and that they know that you're a real person when you're um, in that role and that you you are who you are. Um, they're going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to say it. I say it all the time. And I do it in text with the yam emoji. I'll be like, I am who I am, guys. Like, I can't, I can't help it. It's just who I am. Um, I think the other part of that is transparency. So Nobody likes to find out about something after the fact that you're rolling out, uh, making sure that you're including your team in those things, including your superiors, the people um, that might report up to you someday or whatever that looks like in your path. Um, I look back at COVID-19 when we were making decisions to ha have to furlough employees. Nobody was surprised. Nobody wasn't taken care of. Like we did things in a very strategic way, but we didn't blindside anybody. We're dealing with people's livelihoods and the families that depend on them. Um, and I think the, the only thing that you can do, I think as leaders, we owe it to them to be transparent, even when it's hard, even when it's ugly, we have to be honest and we have to be transparent. Um, confidence, I think insecurity is a little bit of the enemy. Um, you might not know all the answers all the time. And I'm not one of those people that would say, fake it till you make it. I think, again, you would be honest about, hey, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do here. We're working out some things. Um, but when you decide what that path forward is, I think it's really important to, to believe in it and own it and be confident about it. It's really hard to follow somebody um, that's your leader if they're like very wishy-washy about, ah, I don't know if this is going to work. Like we have to be all in. So I think that all in mentality um, is really important and the belief in what we're doing. Um, some of the other things that I advise students for sure when I've talked to different student groups um, is having the growth mindset. What else can I learn? How can I add value? Um, and go somewhere, go to an organization where they believe in you and they're open to those conversations. Um, instead of, you know, the, the classic, well, I've been here six months and I want to raise, ask the question to the organization, what can I do? What else can I learn? And how can I provide value to the organization? I think that makes a big difference um, in advancement. I know I appreciate hearing that from our team members 
um, rather than the the whiny conversation where they come in and they're like, well, I've been here for five five months and I want a gold star and I want a promotion. Well, what else are you doing for us and how can we grow you together and have a partnership there? I think it's a two way street. Um, some of the other advice, you know, I talk about a lot is, is don't play scared. Um, again, I'm not an athlete. I kind of was in the day, but it was a long time ago. Um, but you can't, you can't play scared. You have to believe in what you're doing and you have to kind of fight to the, to the buzzer. So, um, I think that's definitely something, you know, take calculated risks. If that means moving to a small town where you don't know anybody for a job, I think those are, um, really defining moments in your life and, um, oftentimes work out very well. Um, couple other things that I have on my list are, you know, DE&I, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, people should be able to bring their whole self to work. I get to bring my whole goofball self to work every day and do that in a professional way that's, that's genuine. Um, but we should make sure that the people around us feel like they can bring their whole self to work, right? And I know um, DE&I is not something that's going away. It's something that we're going to continue to talk about into the future, but um, no longer are the days of just good old boys club and, you know, we're going to all fit into this mold. So I think bringing your whole self, being who you are. Um, I think people appreciate that. And I, I think it gives us a better product, whatever, whatever line of work you're in. Um, I know certainly in the events world, it, it definitely ha helps us to have a different take on, you know, what we're doing. And I think it makes us better. Um, send the elevator down, invest in your people always. I've been burned a couple of times by this, but I refuse to get a chip on my shoulder about it. Um, I would rather invest in somebody's growth and do what we can to help them you should know all of your team's goals. You should know where they want to go. And you should make sure whoever your manager is knows what your goals are and where, where you want to go. Um, I think that open co communication is really important. Um, I, I didn't get burned by these people, but really, at the Alaris Center, it's a place where people fall in love. I don't know why that is. I think it might be the 80-hour weeks on occasion, but they somehow fall in love, and it's the reverse Noah's Ark. They leave in twos. Um, to other buildings. I've got several examples um, of places where we've got two employees that found each other and great for them, they left me, right? So that's a bummer, um, but I would still take the chance on them. And even sometimes, you know, you do the right thing by them and you want them to find that next step and you want them to grow in their life. And so even when it hurts, I think it's important for us to, um, you know, be open about that and, and try to get them to where their, their end goal is. And um, occasionally they come back to you. So I actually was able to rehire two of our folks that this happened to um, back into the company in Chicago. So now they're back in the fold. So it's like you always have to don't burn bridges. Make sure that you uh, you want what's best for your people, even if it means that your organization is going to suffer a little bit. It, to me, that's just doing the right thing. Um, really, like the last couple things that I have um, for me, I know what fills my bucket. You might not know that if you're a student, you might be at a crossroads in your career and not know what that is anymore. Um, to me, the last the day that I stop loving being in a concert, and Cassie knows this because she sees me all the time at shows, if I can't stand out there and feed off the energy of 15,000 people at a Chris Stapleton show, I'm in the wrong business, right? You've got to do the things that fill your bucket and that you're passionate about. Um, I wouldn't want to work a 40-hour shift on Luke Combs into football or Eric Church into football if I didn't believe in what we're doing and I didn't think it made a difference in the community. Um, so to me, the day I lose sight of that is the day that I need to find something else. So um, my opinion is if you can't find what fills your bucket, it might be a lifelong journey for you, but keep trying because eventually um, I think you'll find the right thing that you're passionate about and that gives you purpose. Um, I don't know how we'd be able to get up every day and do what we do for events if, if it didn't uh, make us happy. And I'm not saying that every day is great because sometimes when it's a blizzard outside, I really just want to put my fuzzy socks back on and drink coffee on the couch. But generally speaking, it should fuel your bucket and it should fuel you, right? Um, and then the graph that you can't see is um, know that your success and your career journey might not always be a straight line. You know, there's a lot of us that kind of fell into something like I did and I was able to get promoted and get promoted and kind of keep growing. Um, but there's a lot of times where it doesn't go that way or you might leave an industry or find an industry you never knew you would be interested in um, and so this graph is, you know, you've got your, your plan and there's the finish line. I'm trying to paint you this picture. Um, and then the, uh, the graph is, you know, you're here and then you're down and then you're over here and you're here. And it's a big kind of squiggle of where your life might go. But I think just being open, being open to that, to constantly find what fills your, your bucket um, and what you're passionate about is really important. Um, and really the last thing that I think is important for leaders 
And, um, you know, anybody even on a team that wants to grow is enthusiasm is infectious. If you come to work every day and you're mopey and you're not happy to be there, your team's going to feel that and it's going to, they're going to feed off of it in the wrong way. Um, but if you're excited about what you do, even if you're not directly overseeing people, I think that, um, it's just really important even for your, your colleagues and your coworkers or other students. Like if you're there and you're enthusiastic, I think you should own that and lean into it. Um, because I think that that really kind of pulls everybody together. So, um, that's kind of all I had other than a lovely thank you slide. Uh, if you have questions though, I'm happy to stay for a little bit. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Anna, and thank you all for being here today. We are very grateful. Next week, we have Bill Chaves, our athletic director, so we hope to see you back. Same time, same place next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>